Hello. These are some examples of absolute extrema. Your directions would say something about uh, either in general finding the absolute extrema or finding the absolute maxima, the absolute minima, uh, the maximum value, some, something along those lines. Um, and when you read that instruction, find the absolute extrema, you're going to be given a function, for example, y equals negative x cubed minus 6x squared minus 9x plus 3. And you'll be given an interval, usually a closed interval like negative 3 to negative 1. Uh, the reason for this interval is the other place for an absolute extrema besides relative extremas, which we'll find here in a bit, uh, the other locations of potential absolute extremas are these two endpoints, right? If our graph as it traversed this interval from negative 3 to negative 1, if it started here at x equals negative 3 and that point where my graph began was lower than all the subsequent points that came, whether or not those subsequent points were relative minimums, relative maximums, doesn't matter. If x equals negative 3 is the location of the lowest point of my graph, then that's going to be where my absolute minimum is, right? Absolute maximum is the highest point, absolute minimum is the lowest. So you're going to be given a function and an interval. And then you're going to find all of your possible candidates of absolute extrema. We've got two here with our endpoints. The others are going to be at your critical numbers. Okay, so critical numbers. Go ahead and take this derivative. We get negative 3x squared minus 12x minus 9. I'm going to set that equal to 0. If this were a calculator problem, I would then go to my y equals potentially and put negative 3x squared minus 12x minus 9 into my y equals and calc my zeros. Um, in this particular case, this could be a non-calculator one because this does factor. I could pull a negative 3 out to begin with. And then x squared plus 4x plus 3 factors further into x plus 3 and x plus 1. And so I can find my zeros there, my critical numbers of negative 3 and negative 1. Okay. So we found all of our candidates now, our critical numbers and our endpoints. In this particular case, my critical numbers happen to be my endpoints. So that's going to cut down some of the testing um, because we are now going to test them. We're going to plug each of these candidates, negative 3 and negative 1, into my y equals and if I had, if my endpoints were different or had different critical numbers, I'd include them as well, but in this case, which is going to be the negative 3 and the negative 1. And when you plug negative 3 into y, we're going to get 3. And when we plug negative 1 into y, we're going to get 7. And so that allows me to answer then I have an absolute maximum at negative 1, 7 and an absolute minimum at negative 3, 3. Okay, we'll do a couple more here. So another example, say we were given f of x equals x squared over 3x minus 6 on 3 to 6. Any new directions again would say something about finding absolute extrema or finding absolute maxes and mins. Okay, so critical numbers first. We've got quotient rule here. Low, D high minus high d low all over low squared which simplifies when I distribute this 2x in to 6x squared minus 12x minus 3x squared which simplifies one step further to 3x squared minus 12x
So where does this equal zero? Well, for a fraction to equal zero, the only piece that we really care about equaling zero is this numerator. 3x squared minus 12x equals zero. Factor out of 3x. And we get two critical numbers, one at zero and one at four. Now, when it comes to testing, I've got two candidates here, zero and four. I've got another two candidates up here at three and six. When I test them, I'm actually not going to test the zero because I want to know what the absolute max and absolute min are on three to six. Well, zero is not on three to six, so it's not going to be the absolute max or the absolute min on three to six. It's possible it is, in fact, higher or lower than these other numbers, um, but again, we're looking at a, a constrained window here. So I'm going to be testing four and then my two endpoints, three and six. Okay, when you plug four into the original function, you get eight thirds. When you plug three into the original function, you get three. And when you plug six into the original function, you again get three. So in this case, I have two absolute maxes. 3, 3, and 6, 3. And it actually, I should rephrase slightly what I just said. It, it's not so much that you have two absolute maxes. We, we only have one absolute maximum. That absolute maximum is 3. But we have two locations of that absolute maximum. One of the locations is at x equals 3. Another location is at x equals 6. Okay, And then an absolute min at 4, 8 thirds. Okay. Okay, one more here. We had y equals, let's do 8 over x squared plus 9 on the closed interval negative 2 to 5. Okay, critical numbers first. Uh, you could do quotient rule here, or you could rewrite this as the quantity of x squared plus 9 to the negative first. That would be chain rule. I, I'm probably just going to do quotient rule personally. I know it's a little bit longer, but it's not bad. So we have oops, low d high, sorry the derivative of 8 is 0 here, <laughs> minus my high d low all over low squared, which x squared plus 9 times 0 is 0, so we're left with negative 16x over x squared plus 9 quantity squared. And again, what makes a fraction equal 0? Well, that would be the numerator equaling 0. Um, I could pull this out if I wanted to, but I know that the place where negative 16x equals 0 is going to be when x equals zero, which is on this interval, so I am going to test it, f of zero, or I guess it would be y of zero in this particular case. Um, I also have two other candidates, the endpoints, negative two and five. Okay, so one more time, you're going to take them, you're going to plug them into the original function, when you plug in zero, we get eight ninths. When we plug in negative 2, we get 8 thirteenths. And when we plug in 5, we get 8 thirty-fourths, or if you were to reduce that, 4 seventeenths. Okay? Now, you may or may not be comfortable with fractions. If you wanted to, you could use a calculator to help you double check this. But if you're looking at these trying to figure out well, which one of these is, is higher or lower than the others, if you are uncomfortable, um, 8 ninths, right, this is pretty close to 1. Um, I don't want to really put approximately 1 because it's not approximately 1, but let's go ahead and put it in parentheses then, kind of notating that thought process. It's, it's closer to the 1 side of things. 8 thirteenths, well, well, close to one, as in it is more than halfway, it's actually closer to the halfway mark than it is to one, right? Think about what half of 13 is. 
13, half of 13 would be like 6.5. 6 6.5 6 is pretty close to 8, so this is actually probably a little bit closer to 1 half than it is to 1. And 4 seventeenths is less than 1 half for sure. Half of 17 would be 8.5. And we're at 4. And so this is, you know, kind of close to a fourth of it. If you think about four sixteenths, that would be one fourth. And so, which one's my absolute max or my absolute min? Well, my absolute max would be at zero eight ninths, and my absolute min would be at five four seventeenths. There you go.